First Timothy chapter 4, 7 to 15. And after that we'll break. We'll take communion and we go home. Amen. Are you ready? Can we read together? One, two, three, go. But reject profane and old wives' fables and exercise yourself towards godliness. For bodily exercise profits a little. But godliness is profitable for all things, having promise of the life that now is and that which is to come. Okay, before you continue, can we pray? Holy Ghost, we thank you. We honor you. We know your glory is here. And your presence is here. You do not fail. Thank you because Lord. We are ready for to. Experience your touch. And to understand the goodness of God. And the fact that Lord. Serving you. Is profitable. And may we grant. Grant that each one of us who grasp this message. Spirit of the living God. We honor you. We welcome you. We worship you. We honor you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Exercise yourself towards godliness. Say with me, exercise. Exercise yourself. It's towards what? Godliness. Amen? Is exercise easy? Is exercise easy? My wife has bought a, a machine in the house. And one of the, the reasons why she bought the machine was for me. She begged me that she should buy a machine because she wants the husband to be in, in, in. And she's so desperate to make sure she gives me a good machine. She bought the machine and is carrying dust. I've been praying that the dust should be get out. And I sometimes go there, make it for a few minutes and then wait for two, wait for maybe one week or two weeks or maybe a month. Two months, hey, darling, you too. You, you are going too far. <laughs> two, I wait for two months. <laughs> so the machine is exercise. I'm too busy to exercise sometimes, but it is important for me to exercise, isn't it? It is what? It is important. Because the Lord told me clearly, told me, even in India, my son, I want you to live long. And for you to live long, you must take care of your body. You must do what? Take care of your body. It says, but, but exercise yourself towards godliness. Just as you, you need discipline to exercise physically, you need discipline to exercise yourself towards godliness. Godliness will not come with just by chance. You must work it out. You must plan it. You must get involved in it. When you feel as not to pray, get up and pray. When you feel as... The new thing that has happened to me in India is that I have seen the need of the gospel and it has changed me. Sometimes you come here at 2, you will find me. Last night, I got up at 2. I was here. Prayed and worshipped the Lord till around 8 a.m. in the morning. The reason is because something has happened inside of me which has changed me. You cannot see what God sees and remain the same. But you must discipline yourself and exercise yourself towards godliness because it does not come by chance. Paul said, I pummel my body or I discipline my body and I subject my body. I bring my body to obey Christ. It doesn't happen by chance. You must discipline yourself. You must tell yourself what to do. If you want yourself to feel as to fast, okay. You will feel as to eat. If you want yourself to feel as to pray, okay. You will feel as to watch TV. The easiest thing. Because you need discipline. You need to exercise yourself to Godliness, it doesn't come by chance. Ken Hagen used to say sometime at 2, 4 a.m. sleep is very sweet and he would say to himself, he would tell his body, body, get up from the bed and go and pray. He would speak to his body. 
He said, because his body must listen to him. Body, get up from the bed and go and pray. If you do not exercise yourself, you will not go far with God. If you do not exercise yourself towards God, you cannot love God in the flesh. You will love him in the spirit first. It must first happen inside of you. And to do that, you must speak to your flesh to obey God. Hallelujah. Amen. Say, I will exercise myself towards godliness. Amen. Exercise yourself with the word. Put yourself under pressure. I told you, watch my knee read the New Testament once a week. He said he read not less than 19 chapters a day in his life. Not less than 19 chapters a day. That many times he's preaching, the Bible will be there. He will just quote from memory. Quote from memory. He will quote the whole, whole chapter, three chapters on memory. He will quote. He knew the scripture. One of the authors in his biography said he explained the scripture as though he wrote it. Why? He spent hours. He exercised himself towards godliness. It does not come by chance. Knowing God comes with a price. And that price must be invested in time. It doesn't come by chance. It comes with the pursuit of God. Amen. Amen. For bodily exercise profits a little. Darling, you heard that it profits a little. It's not as much as you think. <laughs> Hallelujah. You know what she saying? She's saying that's not a good translation. <laughs> but it, it says it profits a little. I am saying I will get that little. Don't worry, I'll get it. Hallelujah. Amen. Because I love you very much. <laughs> Hallelujah. I will get that little. But the Bible says, but godliness is. Can we say it together? But godliness is profitable for all things having promise of the life that now is and that which is to come profitable for all things it means that you profit in godliness you profit in seeking god he who seeks god prospers it is your right to prosper if you seek god amen it is your right for you to prosper if you seek God. But godliness is profitable for all things. And once the Bible says it's profitable, it means that you gain. You gain, isn't it? What is profit? Who wants to tell me? What is a profit? Who has been in business? Again? Outcome. Thank you. You got it. The outcome of your investment. That's your profit. If you invest a hundred thousand and you make a hundred and fifty thousand, what is your profit? Fifty thousand, isn't it? It's the outcome of your investment. The question today is what is your investment? Because you only profit after an investment. If you do not invest in God, the scripture says, whatsoever a man sow, that will he also reap. If you sow nothing with God, you reap nothing. If you sow something with God, you reap something. And God pays a great profit. <laughs> Hallelujah. Godliness, profit. A lot. But godliness is profitable for all things. And he says for, say with me, all things. Say all things. The Bible does not say some things. The Bible does not say spiritual things. The Bible says all things. It includes everything that concerns you. Hallelujah. 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 For many of us, we are more interested in I want to serve God, give to the Lord so that I, I, I at least receive on that day in heaven. Listen, the Bible did not say just in heaven. But godliness is profitable for say all things. All things. And then he continues, say, having promise, say with me, promise of the life that now is. The life that what? Say with me, now is. Say, now is a 
Amen. The life you are now living, God says, the promise is also for now. Hallelujah. Not for tomorrow, not for uh, heaven, but for now. And he says, for, promise now, now is and that which is to come. That which is to come is life in heaven. So both are profitable. God is a good pair. Hallelujah. God is a good pair. He pays to one us. He does not only pay in heaven, he pays in this life. Say with me, God is a good pair. He pro he's, with him we profit. Amen. Amen. Serving the Lord is profitable. Very profitable. God has not called you to serve and just suffer and suffer and suffer. It's profitable. Verse 9 says, let's read very fast. This is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptance. Yes, continue. For to this end, we both labor and suffer reproach. Say with me, labor and suffer. What is your labor? Do you know reproach for Jesus? Or you are so careful that you, nobody ever disturb you about Jesus. At your job, people even doubt whether you are a Christian. Because we trust in the living God. Say with me, because we trust in the living God. Who is the savior of all men, especially of those who believe. Verse 11 and 12. Let's read together. These things command and teach. Let no one despise your youth. But be an example to the believers in word, in conduct, in love, in spirit, in faith, and in purity. Wow. Are you an example in all this? An example in what? Let's read it. In word. Are you the type that when you are angry, they cannot recognize you? Your words become dangerous. You say things that then you repent later. Somebody once told me, oh, Pastor, let, let me say it and repent later. <laughs> in words. Are you an example in words? Are you an example in conduct? Your behavior. How do you behave when you're under pressure? When you are under pressure, do you grumble? Do you resist? Do you you develop attitudes. Do you grumble? You are so quiet and holy. <laughs> what? <laughs> they don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> so, it's conviction. <laughs> You're all guilty. <laughs> do you grumble? Do you, do you pass a statement? Listen to what he says. Do you immediately discuss it? Find a way out. A man's greatness is manifested when he's under pressure. Let me tell you something. When you are not under pressure, what comes out of you is normal. But when you are under pressure, we get to know who you are made of. Because once you come under pressure, then character is put to the test. And then you are face to face whether you react out of that pressure or either you act in holiness. There were many things in India that I disagree with. And I was telling my wife, with the uh, brother, I was telling him some of it when he came to see me, so I can say it. Brother Manning. But I needed character to be quiet. The tendency was to tell him, Brother, this I disagree. I told him twice and he changed it immediately. Because he respect me. But the other ones, God was telling me, stay quiet. Brethren, I had to koroko sharaba banda. Pray in the Holy Ghost to be quiet. You know why? I could have easily caused a division in our team. By bringing up certain things I shouldn't bring. God is so committed to unity that he will judge you even whether you are the pastor or the bishop if you are the cause of division I was so conscious that my action will create a division in the team 
So I let go of certain things because I want unity. Because we are face to face with 300 million gods. It's not time to fight each other. It's not time to complain about each other. It's not time to even look at the, the each other. No! When we are face to face with over 3 million God. I mean 300 million gods. And I'm telling you the gods of India are ugly. Woo. Ugliness to the core. You see, they, um, I wonder how you can worship such a God. You see, they, they, they are got all over the place. The whole place is full of it. At the airport, when you land at the airport, you feel an atmosphere of evil. When your spirit is sensitive, you know you are face to face with the devil himself. And then I knew why India is one of the most dangerous places on earth. Because these people don't make the, in Cameroon and in many places, people hide and make their witchcraft. Here is in the public. It is where? In the public, in the airport. All over the place. The worship of idols. The incense. The incense, you smell it, it's horrible. You sense evil. I plead the, I plead the blood wherever I go. I say the blood, the blood, the blood of Jesus. I take authority over these spirits in the name of Jesus because you are face to face with the enemy. And when the enemy is facing you, it's not time to be looking at the fault of your brother because the fault are there if you want to see them. That's the truth. Amen? Amen? And I share with Pastor Jim and a few others some of the things I disagree with. And the temptation was for me to come on him because I'm not a coward. But I chose not to. I waited till we met here. And then I chatted with him some of the my tent. And he was quickly repented, quickly. It was easy to talk. Amen. Amen. And one of the things, for example, I had to investigate this issue of removing of shoes. In India, you have to remove your shoes. I wanted to seek God and ask God, what, what is all this? So I, the Lord told me, go and check the Hindu principles. The Hindu, it came from the, the Hindu religion. You have to remove your shoes. I read it. But the Indian churches practice it. Because they said they use the case Moses. Because it's the presence of God. I told I said, brother, the presence of God is in your car. Drive with barefoot all over. Go barefoot all over. Because in the new covenant, you are the host of the presence of God. Amen. The presence of God is not this building. It is you. You carry the presence of God. What makes this building important is when you bring God into this building. When you come here, you carry God with you. The presence of God is within you. Wherever you go, you take God with you. It's not. Yes, the kingdom is where? Within you. But... I had to remove my shoe. And my boot come out with war. Sometimes there is a war to pull my boot out. I told my wife I was born with boots. When, when we got married, she had seen my, f f my legs in a picture somewhere. She told the brother she will help me to stop wearing boots. It's 13 years now. She has helped me to increase the boots. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> she gave up. The brother, told, the brother told her clearly, that one don't try. And he said, Robbie will never give up his boots. He was right. But why in India, the battle was fierce with my boots. <laughs> so they'll pull the boots out of my leg constantly. And I said, Lord, what is this? <laughs> and the Lord spoke to me once. He said, Go and just obey. You don't agree, but obey. You don't obey because you agree. You obey because you must be under authority. If they are puppet, they insist you should remove, remove it. 
One of the people they allow me, they say, go ahead and preach. Two of them, two of them. The rest, they took my shoe off. My whole being knows that this is not, to me, it's not biblical. But we had to honor. It's a matter of their culture. And that is what they believe. And therefore, I honor it. Amen? And therefore, what? I honor it. You could make a fight with it. You could tell the pastor, Pastor, I don't agree with this. Let me preach with my shoes. They may let you go on the stage, but they may curse you after. And it may be the end that they ever invited you. Exercise yourself unto. Unto. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In word, in conduct, in love. Say with me, in love. Say in love. In spirit. In faith. And in purity. Say purity. If you are not married, don't touch a woman. If you are married, I mean, if you are not married, don't touch a man. Purity is not an option. It's a must. And I always share this. Brethren, to go to hell is not difficult. It's very easy. It's the easiest thing. Now you can be in church and go to hell very fast. Why? Because you can easily become numb to the truth of God. Very easily. You can become numb. You have heard it so much that it means nothing anymore to you. And you go to hell knowing the truth. That's why the Bible says, many will say to me on that day, did I not preach in your name? Did I not cast out demons in your name? Did I not heal the sick in your name? Did I not raise the dead in your name? And did I not do so many miracles in your name? But the Lord will say to them, depart from me. I knew you not. When I sat in one of the meetings, a, as a brother came to me and confessed to me. He said, I'm living in adultery. My wife is in this church. But please don't say it. I, please, please help me. Just pray that God will help me. Please don't tell the, my pastor. Don't. I sat there, almost wept. He said, this man is living in adultery in this church. And it's okay. It's okay to play. And you just come to church, okay. I don't understand that. I don't understand. Is, is that okay? You just go to church as though all is well. And you are living in adultery. You are going to hell and you are going to church. In purity. In purity. You must choose heaven. And heaven comes with a price. And that price is the rejection of sin. Amen? Verse 18 says what? Till, let's read together. Till I come. Give attention to reading. To what? To reading. To exhortation. To doctrine. To reading. How many of you read? We have books there. Rarely do I get people coming to buy the books. Where, where do you buy, you buy them from, from Amazon? We can offer a better deal. Have you asked and we don't give you a deal? Check the books. We have books. Give attention to to what? That's the scripture. It's not TV. It's reading. Amen? To reading. I have been convicted since I read this man's book. Do you remember his name again? Yes, Tony Robbins. That he read a book once a day. Wow. One book a day. That's an unbeliever saying. I, I shouted. So I've started. Even though I'm, I've started. Yes. The, when the case of my wife, it failed. I, I, I repented later. <laughs> Hallelujah. You all understood what I'm saying. Oh, you understand. But the other day, I was rushing, making sure I finished my book. If he cool, why not me? Give attention to reading. Read, study. That is what used to tell me. My son, he said, he said Robinson, I have learned true reading. He said, read, you will rise above the rest. Teach yourself. Train yourself. Hallelujah. 
Train yourself. Build yourself. Because the scripture cannot be broken. What you sow is what you reap. Amen. Amen. And then he says, to, to what? Say exhortation. To doctrine. Amen. Do not neglect the last part. Do not neglect. Let's read together. Do not neglect the gift that is in you, which was given to you by prophecy with the laying on of my hands of the eldership. Wow. The other day God told me there are gifts in you that came through prophecies. You have not been using them because you think you don't yet have them. But prophecy must be activated by faith. You have received them through prophecy, through Bishop Walker, many other men of God, Dr. Bruce Allen, and there was even a powerful one given to us by Prophet Sadhu. He prayed for my wife and I, told us wonderful, glorious things when we were in China just of recent. And with all that, you activate it by faith. You bring the gift by faith. Amen. Amen. That's why if the Lord is telling you not to neglect it. Because you can neglect it because you don't yet practice it. Amen. Finally, meditate, verse 15. Let's read together. Meditate on these things. Give yourself entirely to them. That your progress may be evident to all. Put King James on that verse. Not progress. I don't want progress. I want profit. Amen? Can we read together? Meditate upon these things. Give thyself wholly to them that thy profiting may appear to all. That's it. How come your profiting doesn't appear to others? The other day, when I read this verse, I said, wow. God wants my profiting to appear to all. Amen? Brethren, that's the truth. God wants everyone to see how you are profiting. So that they may say, oh, this gospel is good. What is his secret? He applies the same method that I apply, but he prospers. The difference is this. You are a child of God. You were made to profit once you serve God. You are not called to serve him and not profit. There is a profit in knowing God. There is a profit in the service of God. It's not only for this life, but the life to come. It's also not only for the life to come, but for this life. So the time for you to profit has come. Amen? Say with me, the time for me to profit has come. So the time for me to profit has come. God wants you to profit. Amen? Say, God wants me to profit. Hallelujah. You must profit in health. You must profit in protection. And I'll share next week and the other weeks on how to profit. I believe God has given me a message that will change the church. Because God expects us to profit in serving him. This thing of serving him and just waiting for that, for the buy and buy. No. <laughs> you know what I mean? When you get there. This road is not an easy road. Once we get there, it shall be well. No. Now. The promise is now. And the life that is to come. If the promise is now. Please say it. Say it with me. The promise is now. And the life to come. The promise is now. Say it with me. Now. Amen. God has not called you just to serve him and not gain anything. Holiness, peace. Righteousness, peace. Amen. Can you know the, you know the case of, of Joseph? Isn't it? You know the case of Joseph? Many people will have been laughing at Joseph. You had the opportunity. This beautiful woman was after you. You ran away. See what it has paid you. Look at your own holiness. Holiness costs you the prison. You are in jail because of your holiness. Look at him. 
Look at his righteousness. He's suffering for being righteous. And they may be laughing at him. Little did they know. Hallelujah. Thank God he said no to Potiphar. If he never said no to Potiphar, we will not know that Joseph, you and I know today. Because he said no to Potiphar. It was the time he said yes to the throne. Promotion comes when we say no to sin. Promotion comes when we say yes to righteousness. Promotion comes when we are tempted and we say, I'd rather die than commit sin. I'd rather die than commit adultery. I will not be ashamed to the Lord. I will bring glory to the living God. I, will, I refuse to walk in shame. Hallelujah. I remember what the poor once said. He told God, take my life. And don't let me die in shame if, I, if that if 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 I will fall into the sin of adultery, take me to heaven. I will not die in shame. Never. Amen. Amen. Some draw your attention to something. Righteousness pays. It pays. Say with me, it pays. Say it pays. Amen? Sin is a reproach to everyone. Righteousness is God. The nation is people. It's not just a land. Righteousness exalts. And it can exalt you. Sin is what? A reproach. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Raise your hands and say, I love you, Jesus. So I'm ready to follow you. And for those who are listening to me, there is a young man listening to me. And you have been struggling with a hidden sin. And you hide from your wife. Listen to the word of the Lord. Get rid of that sin. Before that sin kills you. Yes, you are asking if you are the one. Yes, you are the one. Get rid of that sin. Before it kills you. Get rid of it. You may hide it from your wife, but God knows it anyway. Get rid of it. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Our God is a good God. And I want you to raise your hands and tell him, Lord, I'm ready to profit. Just stand up and tell him you are ready to profit. Ready to profit. Bring that in. Ready to profit. Ready to profit. Say, Father, I'm ready to profit. Righteousness. Hallelujah. You are ready to profit. Just tell him you are ready to profit. Thank you, Lord. I'm ready. We are ready to profit. And every sin, every stronghold, every sickness, every disease, we reject in the name of Jesus. We are ready to profit because righteousness, Lord, is profitable. Godliness is profitable. Lord, we are ready to receive from you the blessings of the Lord, the riches of the Lord, the abundance of the Lord. Holy Spirit, we say we are ready. and We are willing to receive because we shall profit. Everyone tell him, tell him, just talk to him. Pray and tell him. Tell him that you exercise yourself unto godliness. Karaba kadaraba shanda daraba kashara kadaraba sharaba roko raba kadaraba kashara kadaraba kasharaba. We are ready to exercise ourselves unto godliness, Lord. We will exercise ourselves unto godliness, for it is profitable unto all things. Lord, with the promise of life that is now and the life that is to come. And you said, Lord, our prophet will appear to everyone to see. May we exercise ourselves unto godliness, Lord. May every yoke be broken. Every stronghold crumble at thy presence. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. You will be praised. You will be adored. You will be glorified. You will be magnified. King of glory. Lord of glory. 
we worship you. We adore you. We glorify you. We magnify you. Thank you, Lord. Raise your hands and say, Lord, I am ready to obey you and to live for you all the days of my life. I renounce every ungodliness. I accept the righteousness of God. I accept godliness. And Lord, I say, I will profit. I will profit in Jesus' name. In this life. In all things, I will profit. In Jesus' name. Amen. You can sit down, please.